Ollie, welcome to Mojo Cat Studios. Yeah, I call it the e-learning lair. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming out. Yep. Um, gosh, I'll, since last we talked, you, uh, you guys have been pretty heads down. I think a lot of people have been heads down. Um, uh, kind of the next uh, wave of tin can conversations, I think, uh, are in the air. Yeah, there is. There's a lot going on. But thanks for thanks for having me. It's always good to talk to you. Uh, there's a lot changing. There's a lot happening, and we've been very busy trying to uh, be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's been it's been an interesting few months as we get closer to the new new standard with uh, with tin can. So. So where are we at on that on the standard right now? Yeah, I think it's still in 0.95 uh, version. I think 1.0 uh, is set to release uh, April 26, I believe, is the day. Uh, so we're all bracing for the day, and uh, there's <laughs> there's there's little to change between now and then, but a few things to. Well, what does that really progress. mean? What is what's going to change? I mean, how um, compared to where we're at now, um, what what's going to be when we go to one point Is that going to be is that going to change what we're doing now or what we're experimenting with? Or is the next? No, I, I, uh, with the, actually, great question. That's come up quite a bit. The the changes between point nine five and one point are very minimal. Uh, it's almost it'll be almost completely backwards compatible with point nine five. Just some very basic minor changes in uh, how the statements are formed and, and, and some definitions and ways to describe the standard so it's easy to understand, adding some additional use cases and, yeah. and some other work that's going on right now. But it's, uh, it's not too drastic of a change, which is really nice because all the current tools uh, and, and uh, um, learning record stores, uh, authoring tools, all, all of them are going to have very little, uh, very little to change between 0.95 and 1.0. Which is very different than where what the change was. The level of change between 0.9 and 0.95, very drastic. A lot mm. of changes. Mm. So this is um, this is a lot lot less lot less change. But it's I think it's, it's cleaning it up and packaging it, right. getting it ready for uh, for people to. Because a lot of people are waiting for 1.0 to come out before they right. before they start building uh, building some of that. So should they be waiting? Or do you think uh, they should be uh, jumping right in? My answer is always no. Don't wait. Uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't wait to build an LRS <laughs> right. uh, until 1.0 came out. Uh, yeah. Although we're in a different place, uh, right. I, I think uh, I think the, there's a lot of people today that aren't waiting, and they're they're starting to learn about what they need to do in pre preparation for uh, building the tools, uh, building the strategy, whether they're a practitioner or a developer. Uh, they're starting now uh, to to you know kind of iron out the kinks and and get ready. So if an organization wanted to say, hey, let's get start getting ready for this, what should they do to, to get engaged with the community? What would be the best things they should be working mm -hmm. on or looking at, or yep. who should be, they be talking well, to? Well, uh, there's a lot, a lot more resources now since we last talked even. Uh, there, there's a lot of resources online where you can read documentation. That's the first thing I want to go through. Uh, and documentation is not, not, not all Don't technical. There's videos, the videos, absolutely. There's videos. There's some great videos. There's some uh, uh, documentation, and not all technical. There's you know, you choose and pick and choose what you want to see. There's a lot of great blogs on this on this topic. A lot of people are sharing some great ideas and how they want, how they're implementing Tim Can. Yeah. Uh, and some great use cases people can see out there. But I think more importantly is that you want to, if you have you have if you have questions, you have things that are that are that are burning. Mm -hmm. There's places, there, there, there are forums to, to get those out there, and there's a lot of people waiting to answer and help you. Uh, one of them is the adopters uh, list, uh, the Tin Can adopters list. This is a Google group. Um, and there are, every time we've had people come on board, practitioners come on board and ask questions about, hey, I'm trying to understand this better about my content, or uh, can Tin Can help me do this or that? Uh, uh, and the, you know, right away, four or five people jump in and start asking questions and offering mm. assistance and providing solutions. Uh, and it's a great way to uh, get your answer, your questions answered. I would encourage everybody to go on those lists and, uh, aside from just reading and doing you know, your own self-paced work, just get out there and ask questions. And people are willing to help. They really want to see you succeed. And it's a great place to do that in the doctors. So there really is a community out there, and you're really not alone on that. So. Yeah, and it's growing quite a bit. So it is moving at a fast rate. So. Uh, you can see it's very different than a month ago or six months ago, uh, yeah. and, and people are ready to answer some of those questions they couldn't answer before uh, to help you out. So, cool. yeah, cool. to do that. Well, that's good. So people should do that, yeah. and uh, we'll probably provide some links. Uh, Absolutely. On the with this video is for that. Yeah, so. we should do that. Right. So you were telling me earlier that um, there's some stories kind of coming out 
people are really doing some experimenting and trying some different things. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what's been happening there. Yeah, it's the tin can age of experimentation right now. It's <laughs> an interesting uh, time. It's interesting to see people start doing things with it that re really makes sense that you can apply in their everyday work. Uh, one of the simple things that we simple, it's really not simple before tin can, but I think uh, people have always wanted to do these things and designers are uh, are extremely creative in the ways that they come up with, uh, uh, ways of understanding learning and, and, and how to build better, higher quality learning and these are things that we all, we all discuss all the time. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we're seeing right now is taking aspects of understanding formal training and you know whether that's in a course-like material or assessments, uh, surveys, uh, and uh, matching that up and correlating it to what people are actually doing on the job. Uh, so we're seeing, you know, what, 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 are they, what documents are they accessing, what, how are they using those, um, are, what kind of discussions are they having about, about a certain subject. And, and so it gives us a better overall understanding, right, holistic understanding of, of, the, of someone's learning experience from mm -hmm. the time they, they hear about it, the time they talk about it, take a training course on it, yeah. uh, they watch a video about it. Uh, all these things can now be uh, analyzed in one place, but really simply it's the engagement versus the formal training and how yeah. do you, uh, what, what are people doing after they learn, which is very exciting. That is, it's fantastic. Seeing. You know what I see uh, too is we're approaching it from the problem space and not the solution space. We're looking at this as, okay, here's the things or the challenges in learning and development today and the ideas or concepts that we haven't been able to uh, uh, attack or approach, right? But now we have this potential tool. Let's, let's solve these problems. Let's figure this out with this new tool as opposed to um, somebody deciding this new technology was great right. and we built you this thing and this is how it's used now. Right. Um, everybody join in, yeah. right? So it's a it's a totally backwards. No, it's, some it's forwards. Actually, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. Yes. And we and we that, that's uh, it's really helped us uh, understand what we need to build. We're right. you know we could build features daily if we wanted to. You know, we, right. you know, anybody a tool vendor could develop something new pretty quickly. But what I think is important here is that we're uh, we're understanding what people are wanting to do with this and what mm -hmm. problems they're looking to solve. Yeah. And then we're trying to fit our solutions to, to make sense for them, right? So yeah. with a lot of, it's a, there's a huge feedback loop right now for us and we're seeing this experimentation. Right. We're taking that information, we're having conversations with people, putting out something that's useful, a useful right. feature and a product or some sort of technology. Uh, help, having technology help us solve, this, right. solve the problem and not the other way around is, yeah. uh, is it's just, it's just really nice. Well, I think that's the advantage of you guys being kind of uh, embed in the whole building of the um, of the white papers, getting involved in the community, actually contributing to Standard the standards, and right? Yep. right? Yep. So you guys are in there and you're connected with the community and able to kind of shape your business, right? True. Around that too. Yep. So you're getting this, you're contributing in this way and you're getting direct feedback and you're able to kind of take that and mold it into some, uh, some yeah, we'll know, business be, offerings. Absolutely. We're trying to be a, a, a liaison between what the use cases are, what the standard can do, so we're trying to form that, and how does that relate to, for us, our product, but yeah. uh, and other people's products as well. Uh, really understanding what this all looks like together, and it's, it's still growing, but uh, it's a lot of experimentation going on, which is yeah. nice, that helps us see. So how is it shaping what you guys are offering now? You've been talking about some new things you've been working on. Yeah. Uh, so what's what do you have that's new that you think is, is from some of this uh, yeah. synergy? So a lot of the uh, experimentation has been going on in Low, you know, low barrier to entry, low cost solutions, open source solutions like people are doing things in Moodle, WordPress, uh, in Drupal, and uh, also you know, launching their own uh, learning environments that are just based on a website, right, with right. some links on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so what they've been doing is uh, uh, finding ways to launch content and training and learning experiences in, in ways that that aren't they haven't been able to do it before using Tin Can. Uh, one of the things that's kind of driven for us is the need for a launching mechanism. So we're launching um, a uh, content launching tool that's based on LTI, it's the Learning uh, Tool Interoperability Standard, and uh, it enables people to take their content, launch it anywhere, uh, get information about their users or their learners from a CMS or an LMS, hmm. and then be able to store it in any learning record store that yeah. they choose. 
So there's a simple tool like that that really uh, solves a lot of problems. And uh, we've had numerous folks reach out to us and say, I just need a place to launch this right. training for right. my for my customers or uh, for my for my learners. And that's that's kind of the um, that's one 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 new feature, new tool we're we're launching here very soon. We're so excited about that. Uh, right. We've also had a, a huge overhaul to our user interface. People have told us. You know, it's hard to hear this feedback sometimes. They told us, <laughs> we hate this button. You know, this has got to go, and this is this, this is not easy to understand. I couldn't get to this page. How do I just... Right. So we've taken a lot of that feedback uh, through our user voice yeah. forum and implemented those changes recently. We launched an entirely new user interface. Nice. I um, saw it. It really looks, it looks thank you. really nice and thank easy you. to navigate yeah. and intuitive. So. And the last thing is we have... Uh, we're going to be in Learning Solutions here in Tin Can Alley highlighting a few of our um, new an analyses. Uh, sections. So we have some statistics that we're offering on on what popular content is. Mm -hmm. What are people uh, yeah. doing? What are they seeing? Uh, and then the not so popular content you may not be may not should right. not be wasting your time and, and resources on. <laughs> right. Uh, so we have a statistics section there. It shows some of the most active people in mm -hmm. your learning community uh, in your learning environment. Uh, you know, from a number of different tools. Uh, right. And this is all in our, our learning record store where they can Excellent. add those. We also have a new uh, analysis, which is really interesting for us that uh, we've heard from a lot of feedback on. We're doing some uh, question analysis on, uh, on assessment questions. Uh, so we can measure the quality of a question and whether it was conducive to someone's success on an entire assessment. Interesting. Wow. And we do this analysis over a large subset of, of assessments and, and users. So that's another additional uh, analysis that we're building. Again, all based on feedback, all based on what people are telling us, uh, and it's you know incremental adds to to our product. So some exciting things coming with yeah. Saltbox. Excellent, excellent. So we're uh, you, are you guys going to Learning Solutions? Yes, we'll be in Learning Solutions in Tin Can Alley. Right, and Actually, then talking about all these new things that we talked about yeah. today. And then we got some we got which I'm kind of excited about talk about MLearnCon and DevCon coming up as well. You guys are going to be there. I know you're doing a couple of sessions there as well. Kind of one that's more leadership and then the other yeah. one more technical. Yeah, well, congratulations to you and all the work <laughs> you've done. You've been working really hard on this It's uh, been fun. This program. It's so a lot of fun. It's been a great work. Uh, yeah, we have two two sessions, uh, actually with three, but uh, John Delano, our CEO, will be presenting on organizational strategy and getting organizations ready for Tim Cam. Uh, so really non-technical, very yeah. uh, in-depth look. Uh, at, at how to get an organization ready. Well, John so, has that leadership experience, so it does. That's, how yeah. he, that's his lens. He looks at it from exactly. a standpoint of the business and that, so that'd be a good session. Yeah. For that's what he's done in the past. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Russell Duhon, our CTO, is going to be at DevCon uh, presenting on a technical implementation in, in, in an enterprise nice. and how to, how, to get, uh, how to get going with 10 can and, yeah. and, and things you need to do to get ready for it. I think that's an important conversation. I think based on even what you've been saying today, that's kind of where people are at. You know, how are we going to get this mm -hmm. to work in our organization? Let's try some things. And mm -hmm. that, so that, why do we need this to work? Why do we need this to work? Right. right? Yeah, exactly. it, these questions are all the only the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, looking forward to uh, seeing you at the conferences and then go and maybe get some coffee next week or something like coffee that. Coffee sounds good. <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> Absolutely. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.